My name is Jacob Patrick. I'm one of the PGY2 residents here at the USF Morsani Internal Medicine Residency Program. And I want to talk to you today about dyspnea, or more specifically, how to approach dyspnea as a overnight house officer. Let's say the nurse calls you and says, doctor, my patient can't breathe. What are some things you're going to want to know? First and foremost, I like to know the patient's vital signs. Vitals are vital. Ask, how's the patient's blood pressure? How's the patient's respiratory rate? Does the patient have a fever? How are the patient's oxygen saturations? If the nurse tells you that the patient is hypotensive, e.g. they have a blood pressure below, let's say 90 over 60, that's a little concerning, especially if that's not what their baseline is or even close to it. Or if the patient is to get to say 30, or if the patient's O2 sats are 85%. These are all concerning things. If the patient's vital signs are overall unstable in your eyes, then I would tell your senior, because this patient may need a higher level of care. Let's say alternatively, you ask a nurse for the vitals, the patient's blood pressure is fine, the patient's breathing a little fast maybe, but nothing crazy, maybe 20, 22 times a minute. The patient's O2 sats are, let's say 92%, you're feeling pretty good about things. So, at this point, if the patient is stable, you have time to check the chart. Get a feel for the patient. Look at their most recent notes. Look at their comorbidities. Look at the medicines that they're taking. This shouldn't take you too long. Five minutes or less. You need to go see the patient in person. But first, a passing familiarity with the patient wouldn't hurt. Your assessment of the patient starts as soon as you walk into the room. How does the patient look? Are they comfortable or uncomfortable? Are they sitting, standing? Are they lying down? Are they tripoding, trying to make more room to take a deep breath? Are they using accessory muscles of respiration, such as the sternocleidomastoid, the trapezius, perhaps they are belly breathing? Something else that you need to watch out for is Strider. Some of you may have heard Strider. Basically, it's a high-pitched noise that you hear when the patient takes a deep breath that could indicate a developing acute airway obstruction. Could be from lymphadenopathy, could be tracheal stenosis, epiglottitis. The bottom line is this patient needs to be assessed by your senior and they may also need a higher level of care. So now, you've established that the patient is stable. They don't have floridly increased work of breathing or strider you can move on. At this point, it's in your best interest to take a focused history. Think about the onset. Think about the duration. Think about what makes it better, what makes it worse. Maybe it hasn't been going on long enough for the patient to answer all these questions, but I believe that it's important to ask them regardless. Uh, does the patient have any associated symptoms? One of the most important ones to look for when you're asking these questions is chest pain or even abdominal pain. The reason that that's important is because chest pain and dyspnea should alert you that there may be a problem with the heart, such as ischemia or myocardial infarction. The patient may even have an arrhythmia that you'll pick up. Now, if you note that the patient has shortness of breath and chest or abdominal pain, I would ask the nurse to get a STAT EKG order of troponins and alert your senior. Let's say the patient doesn't have any chest pain or abdominal pain. Your best next step is to do a focused physical exam. Do we need to do a head to toe exam of the entire patient, every organ system? No. What we wanna focus on is the lung exam, the heart exam, and the extremities. You may also want to consider a limited neurologic exam. Asking the patient, what's your name? Where are you? What's the year? Who's the president? If they seem confused or lethargic, these are warning signs that the patient could have a gas disturbance in the blood, AKA they could be acutely hypoxic, hypercarbic. I would probably get an ABG. Didn't write it up here, but I think it's important. So you checked your chart. You've got your history and physical on the patient. And you listen to the patient 
and you notice wheezing, especially expiratory wheezing. You also notice that the patient has a worsened cough. Maybe it's productive of yellow sputum. Maybe they've had a cough for a long time, and this is just a worsening of their cough and a worsening of their dyspnea. I would be concerned for an exacerbation of an obstructive lung disease, such as uh, asthma or COPD. While it's not one of the things that's the most, most important to roll out, I wanted to mention it because it's something you can really help the patient with. If they're not getting breathing treatments, try every four hour uh, albuterol ipratropurium. Make sure that they have supportive oxygen to keep their oxygen levels at least 90%. And make sure the patient has a continuous pulse oximeter. If the patient were to have crackles on their lung exam, as well as edema, especially in the lower extremities, and an elevated jugular venous pulsation, then you might think, okay, this patient looks like they could be fluid overloaded, right? Which is one of the things that we want to try to rule out. The best thing to do if the patient's getting fluids, stop the fluids because you're just gonna make the patient more fluid overloaded at that point. If a patient is fluid overloaded, you would consider a couple of other things, such as getting imaging of the chest, aka the chest x-ray, and giving the patient some diuresis to help get some of the extra fluid off, such as Bumex or Lasix, depending on the patient. And maybe by the time the day team comes in the next day, the patient's breathing a lot better. So let's say you keep assessing the patient, you're listening to their back, and you notice on one side, there are hardly any breath sounds. You continue to assess the patient with percussion. And you notice on the side where there's no breath sounds, it sounds very suspiciously hyper-resonant. At this point, I would probably be thinking about a pneumothorax. The most important thing to do is to order a stat chest x-ray and alert your senior. Reason for this is a pneumothorax can actually cause circulatory collapse if it is allowed to evolve into a tension pneumothorax. And it's something that you would need to get the pulmonologists involved in or some team that can place a chest tube to help the lung re-expand. So you're examining the patient and on your exam, you don't really notice any of the things that I've mentioned so far. No unilaterally decreased breath sounds, no wheezing, no crackles. The patient doesn't report any chest pain, um, any abdominal pain. The only thing that you notice is the patient has an elevated heart rate or tachycardia, an elevated respiratory rate or tachypnea. And something that I didn't write up here, but that you should also watch out for, redness and swelling of one of the lower extremities that could indicate a DVT. And the worst thing that these non-localizing exam findings with the tachypnea and tachycardia could point to would be an acute pulmonary embolus. What do you want to do? Because that can be very serious. I would probably run by my senior. Will you come check out this patient? I suspect they may have an acute pulmonary embolism. Have your senior look at the patient. And if the two of you are in agreement you should probably order a CT of the pulmonary arteries. Also, I would consider a lower extremity Doppler. Not as urgent as this, but it helps to roll out if there are any DVTs that could be contributing to the pulmonary embolism. While there are many and varied causes of dyspnea, today we've reviewed five of the most important diagnoses to rule out that could be causing dyspnea as a house officer. MI, acute pulmonary embolism, pneumothorax, arrhythmia, and fluid overload. So that concludes my talk on the approach to dyspnea for a house officer intern. I hope you learned something. Take care.